This week I was getting our Black Friday deals page all prepared. It's a very simple page, just a few cards with some images and text. But what I wanted to do was call attention to some of my favorite deals on here. So I thought a nice way to do that would be to create these little badges. But my next question was, how exactly was I gonna do that? Of course, I could just drop in a headline block, move it to the top of this card and fiddle around with negative margins. But really I wanted to absolute position these so that they didn't interrupt the flow and the spacing on the page, but just kind of floated on top. Now there are all kinds of ways you could do this too, including just creating a class for each one and putting in the content on like a pseudo element, which is part of the trick I ended up using. But I actually decided this would be a good case for using data attributes. If you haven't used data attributes before, it's actually pretty nifty. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is, as well as writing some CSS for a before pseudo element. And hopefully within this lesson, you'll get to learn a few new little tricks. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at how it's done. So on the back end of the site, everything looks just like you think it would. There's a container wrapping everything, a grid inside of it, and then a container for each one of these cards. Inside of each one of these cards, we have a container for this top section, some headlines, buttons, and all of that. Now what I wanna do is actually bring that badge in as a pseudo element on this card. So the first thing I need to do to do that is grab one of these cards and add a class to it. So I'll scroll down here to advanced. I already have a class on here, but we can add multiples if you just add a space. And for this, I'm just gonna call this class selection, since this is kind of the selection I wanna make. So we'll go ahead on this first one here for Perf Matters, we'll add that selection class. And now we're gonna use data attributes to actually tell the CSS what we want this pseudo element to say. So to do a data attribute, and this is part of Generate Blocks Pro, you can go in here, they all need to start with data, then hyphen. And just to keep things consistent, I'm just gonna call this data hyphen selection, since that's what we're calling the class. Now with that, I can pass in the value I want to have. So for this Perf Matters one, I want it to say top pick. So we've added the class to this card and we've added the data attribute, data hyphen selection, and then the value of top pick. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll jump over here into our customizer and refresh it so it sees all the changes. And we'll get started writing some CSS. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do here is grab that selection class that we gave it and we're going to have to position this relative since we're going to be absolutely positioning the pseudo element we want to give the uh, parent container the relative positioning so we're able to absolutely position that within the parent element now we'll grab this pseudo element we'll do selection double colon and then we'll do the before we'll go ahead and open and close our brackets and right here we can see how this data attribute works. So what we're gonna do for this pseudo element is do content and we'll do ATTR, which is for our attribute. And then in here we put in that data attribute. So we're gonna say data hyphen selection. And as soon as we do that, you can see that it brought in the value of that data attribute. It's just put it right here inside of our card and it says top pick. Of course, we need to do a lot of styling to this, which we're gonna to get to here in a second. But you can see this is almost like bringing in dynamic data, except we didn't have to go create custom fields to do it. We're just doing it through data attributes. So we need to get to styling this. We're gonna do a position of absolute. We're gonna text transform this, text transform, uppercase. We'll change the font size to something like 0.7M. We're gonna do some letter spacing. We'll do something like 0.1M just to space those out a little bit. We'll do a background color so we can give it that pill shape. We'll do uh, the color here for the admin bars yellow. We need to change the color of the text so we'll give it our dark gray color. We need to give it some padding. We'll do 0.2M on the top and bottom and 1.5M on the left and right. We'll give it a border radius. And for this, I'll just do 100% viewport width. That will just make sure no matter the size of this, it's always gonna have that pill shape. And next, we need to actually center this inside the card. And to center something that's absolutely positioned, you have to use a little bit of a trick. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say on the right, we want this to be 50%. And then we have to do a transform, translate X of 50%. And when we do that, it will actually move this absolutely positioned element right in the center of its 
parent that has the position of relative, which is our card. Now we just want to move this up just a hair so we can say top and we'll do minus 12 pixels. And that will have it just float on top here. So with just these few simple lines of CSS, we have everything styled here. And now we can play with our data attributes to bring these selections in to other cards. So go ahead and publish this here. We'll go back on the other end for Termageddon. We want to add that same class, so selection. The data attribute, we're going to do data hyphen selection. And for the value on this one, I'm going to say biggest savings. We'll go to this generate made easy course by my buddy Jonathan, and we'll give it the class of selection, add the data attribute, data hyphen selection, and we'll say new since this course just came out. Now we can go ahead and update that. We'll close out of the customizer here. And you can see that now it's bringing in that biggest savings and the new here dynamically. And what's nice about this is we didn't have to go create a bunch of custom fields. We didn't have to fiddle around with putting in a heading and then worrying about a bunch of negative margin. We can control all of this pretty globally from one place. We just really had to focus on one class and one data attribute, and we can change these out as we need them. Of course, if you want to go here and add this to other things, you can do the same thing for nurture copy. We could say selection for the class, add a data attribute, we'll do data selection. And for this, we could say uh, our favorite and hit update. Refresh on the other end, scroll down here to find nurture copy, and now we have the little badge on it. Now, of course, we didn't have to use data attributes to accomplish this. There are all kinds of ways you can do it. But data attributes is something that doesn't get a whole lot of love. And personally, I don't use it that often, but in a case like this, it really does come in handy and it's a fun way to experiment with things and push things a little bit further. Data attributes are only included in the Generate Blocks Pro edition, which is definitely worth its weight in gold. If you'd like to see some other videos I've done on Generate Blocks, you can click one of these videos up here in the corner and we will catch you in the next video.